Hi, thank you. Can everyone hear me all right? Yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm Christy. I want to thank all of my mentors and the Antioch staff who have helped me along this path, as well as my family and friends who've encouraged and reflected my growth after each residency. I'm really excited to share my work with you now. How you can all support me in this moment is to help me turn nervousness into excitement and project confidence onto me as I read. I worked on both fiction and creative nonfiction in this MFA. Right now, I'm going to read a condensed section of the second chapter of a fiction novel I'm working on about time travel. It's called Time Weaver. Because I like to time travel, we're gonna just jump right into the middle of chapter two without explaining. So hold on tight and see if you can figure out the details on your own. Here we go. What's happening to me? Naria asks. Ex her external seriousness seems to surprise the two playful women. Why are they turning colors? Ah, you're activating, Sambria says. I wonder if it was the jump here, if it had started even earlier than that. Naria notices Karina's examination as she says, you're right, she's activating. How did I not know she activated right now? Not much surprises the time traveler. And this was unexpected. Yeah, your consciousness from back then isn't here right now to learn about it. And she, Sombria looks at Naria's, whose face is pale, eyes glazed over. Clearly, she's not gonna remember this. And apparently, I don't tell the younger version of you either. Let's get her into the darkness, Karina says. And Nari feels the warm arm wrap around her to guide her. She needs to move through this, and it will be emotional. The women change course and walk out of the station. Nari's view of the two women has gone blurry, but she can still see her own feet. She notices they're walking through Shibuya Crossing but what usually has hundreds of people passing through it is for some reason empty and there are no cars. This apocalypse-like moment brings her to the realness of the future reality to come. The two women continue to talk as Naria passively comprehends. The fourth and final blood moon of the blood moon trinity of 2015, where you come from, will fall in September of that year and expose the new heightened powers and emotions people developed. In 2020, a total takeover by the field cops divided the world. The field cops are robots created to arrest anyone who externally shows emotion. The fear of these new and intense emotions peaked in 2020, and they publicly banned them all, creating a deep hidden culture of indulgence. Two, dis two distinct types of zones exist now, public space, light, and private space, dark. All homes are public space and in the light. The field cops only police the light, they detect the lack of emotion and alarm in the presence of displayed emotion. In the darkness, these robots overload with emotion and malfunction. The dark is the only place we can let out emotions freely. People in the light interact without expressing emotions on their face and hide visual cues to their thoughts. The removal of body language diminishes communication by 80% due to the missing social and facial cues. Spoken word is highly valued while simultaneously used to hide true meaning and feelings behind the words. As a result, the skill of hiding one's emotions, lying, has become an art form. The light is bright, cold, and the air is thin. It's an eerie, peaceful feeling, like walking through a quiet forest on a brisk night. The change in physical air is a direct result of the lack of emotion present. Emotions were felt on subtle, level, subtle levels, and as awareness increased, they became anything but subtle. The dark is only a tint dimmer in the day, making it easy to miss visually. Those who are sensitive feel it in their bones. The three women shift into the dark through a nearby known portal. Naria notices a red gate as they pass under it and shivers run down her spine. The air is thick and warm with the overindulgence of emotion. The emotions previously held back now pour out of Naria as Karina guides her to sit along the raised edge of a garden wall. What is this place? Naria asks as she looks up, the tears softening. I feel everything in here. I feel it so strongly. What is that? Ah! Another wave of emotion stops her. Karina rubs her back and says, it's important that you feel it all so that you can learn to decipher what's present. It's not all good. And what is good is too good. But under that, you'll find yourself. Those who live 100% in the light are called bright beings. People in the light live simple lives, go to school and 
enter a pre-selected job. The repressed daily public culture drives most to an overindulgent private district where all rules are off. This is the dark. An average person goes to work, then plays in the darkness to the brink of no return, and then goes back to work with a sort of fight club rule. Incidents in the darkness go unreported, and those who live 100% in the light have no awareness. Those who choose to live 100% in the darkness are, are called night dwellers, and they run the vast underground network, culture, and structure that is the darkness. Darkness? This is darkness? Narya's eyes are closed now, her hands covering them tightly. She experiments with cracks on one side of her eyes, letting the dark in, pink and blues swirl into purple fuchsias. What do they mean by darkness? Answers will come and hang in there, Sambria says. More colors peek through Narya's fingers as the details of this world go on in story. Sambria continues on. For over a decade now, people have communicated based on face value alone. Kids who do not know a time before this have grown up without externally expressing emotions. They're entering their teens. This generation is informally and secretly referred to as Gen AI, Generation Artificial Intelligence. Public acknowledgement of their generation would be to publicly acknowledge the darkness, thereby bringing it into the light. Gen AI children are not allowed into the darkness, if they could even find it. On occasion, one will wander on the edge, but with no ability to comprehend what it is, they do not enter. Perhaps they can feel it, the emotion oozing from the shadows. Traditionally, children can perceive much more strongly than adults, and that hasn't changed, but they go, but they get, they get no guidance or even external acknowledgement of an awareness into what they perceive. This leads to further suppression of emotion and a new robot demeanor adopted by the, the youth. In the light, there is no violence, heartbreak, or pain. There are strong social rules and expectations which bind them. In a way, these people are saved from all the negative aspects of life. However, the so-called peaceful life in the light protects from raw, painful emotions while diluting the beautiful ebb and flow of life. There is no flow, no passion, no drive for life. People flatline through their youth and into their systematized adult lives. What will happen as these kids enter their 20s? Will they be lost completely to a life of complacency and false security? These questions drive us. We call ourselves the emoticons, Sambria says. Luckily for us, the dark and the light continue to fight amongst each other and not with us because both vastly outnumber the emoticon network. If the emoticons restore emotional freedom, the play in the darkness must end. This threatens both the light and the dark. So, Samria says, we fight for those who have no idea of our existence while being ridiculed and undermined by both the light and the dark. People here in 2035 think they have two options, unlimited restricted fun or revert to the controlled and monitored entertainment of pre-2020. Ah! Naria interrupts with a screech so loud Sambria's face contorts as she covers her ears. Let it out. You're safe here, Karina says, hands still resting on her back. Naria lets out a softer weep of distress. Talk it out. What are you experiencing? Karina encourages. From the way the two older women seem completely unfazed by her anguish, Naria wonders what others experience with their gifts and if the daily life in an emoticon looks similar to this. I can, I can see the darkness, Naria begins, sorry, Naria begins as the wave fades. I can see what I feel. Why can I see what I feel? That's because Sambria stops herself to look, to the look in Karina's eye that reminds her. Answers are within, Karina says, keep going. It's like I'm suffocating on emotions, Naria continues. I can see all the emotions stuffed in this place. It's so dense. I see what other people feel. I feel what I see. So if, ah, another wave hits, but Naria talks through it. Purple, anguish, blue, calm, and then sad, pink, despair, and lust, orange, connection, and creativity, green, love, and peace, and destruction, red, passion, and rage, yellow force and will, the wave fades. Well, 
that sounds intense. No wonder it hurts so badly, says Sombria. So if not all of what I feel is me, then I can let go of what's not me? How do I feel what's me with it? How do I tell what's me with certainty? Naria asks the universe as she takes her hands off her eyes and opens them a crack. The colors have stabilized. I can feel them, but they pass more easily now. Great, Karina says. Your gift, Narnia, is crucial to our work. Sombria can read thoughts, but for the night dwellers who live 100% in the dark, their thoughts are buried by the darkness. Narnia, you can read their auras, which get brighter in the darkness. As you, as you just learned now, thank you for, as you just learned now, thank you for the work that you just did, Sombria adds. It helps all of us. It does, Karina says. Is there another? There is another option that the masses don't see yet. They don't see the hope for a third option of trust and the love of both the darkness and the light. How to reshape society and avoid utter chaos? Well, this is a question we can't think about yet. We simply focus on how to save future generations from a meaningless existence where, we, where all emotions are unexpressed and suppressed. Your role in this scenario is so important. A sense of purpose previously unfamiliar to Naria grows inside and around her. She looks down at her own skin to see all of her colors blend together, memorizing each strand of light so that she will always know herself.